Timers. Good morning, everyone. First, I want to uh, thank uh, Professor Morita for her, his kind uh, introduction. And it's really a privilege and pleasure uh, for me to be with you, although virtually. And uh, my talk will be on the clinical um, characteristic and cause of generalized pustular psoriasis. Some of these have been uh, mentioned by Professor uh, Min Chen uh, just now, so there will be a little bit of a duplicate here. Okay, uh, these are my conflict of interest. Uh, we already know that uh, general pustular psoriasis or GPP is characterized by recurrent flares of uh, widespread painful uh, skin erythema, started with sterile pustule, which may coalesce to form lakes of pus, as seen here. And uh, mucosal lesions uh, include uh, geographic tongue, chylitis, and uh, also a uh, fissured uh, tongue. Facial and genital lesion are actually not uncommon uh, in our patient with this uh, distressing uh, disease. And uh, the clinical and lab uh, finding uh, just now, Professor Minchen already mentioned to you, uh, affected skin is usually very painful. And uh, patients with GPP flare, they are usually very ill with fever, malaise, fatigue, edema, arthritis, and uh, uh, common laboratory findings include leukocytosis, neutrophilia, elevated CRP, hypocalcemia, hyperproteinemia, and abnormal uh, liver function uh, uh, tests. And uh, Professor Johan already showed you the key histologic uh, feature. Uh, and uh, uh, in my uh, clinical practice, I found that uh, most of the patients uh, with uh, GPP, um, the histology is characterized by spongiform microabscesses or mongrel and cogoid. And this usually composed of purely uh, neutrophil, unlike uh, its differential like uh, diagnosis, which is acute generalized xanthematous pustulosis, where you can see eosinophil inside the microabscesses. Uh, and uh, the dermal infiltrates uh, in GPP are usually superficial and composed of predominantly lymphocytes with few uh, neutrophils. And uh, as already alluded to and uh, by Professor Johan, uh, the typical histologic feature of a psoriasis that we are all familiar with may be absent in acute uh, GPP. And GPP is a very heterogeneous uh, disease with a wide spectrum of disease severity and a highly variable uh, cause. Some patients may have recurrent episodes of postulation that affect less than 10% of their body surface, while others may have recurrent uh, episodes of a GPP that affect the whole skin surface. And flares are characteristic of a, a GPP. And although some patients may have persistent disease with perpetual minimal pustule and intermittent flare of increased severity, most patients with GPP have a relaxing disease with recurrent flares and no pustulation in between their flares. GPP flares may occur de novo, but most of them are triggered. And common triggers include the use or withdrawal of systemic steroid, infection, pregnancy, and stress. And uh, in, the, in my local setting in Johor Bahru, where I'm based, uh, use of systemic corticosteroid uh, is often associated uh, with GPP flare. GPP is a very unpredictable disease and exhibits a highly variable uh, clinical uh, cause. Some patients may have multiple flares uh, per year. I have patients who have more than 20 flares per, per year, two, three flares uh, every, every month, while others may experience a flare every few years. And uh, in our analysis of 95 patients with acute GPP flare affecting body surface area of at least 30%, 57% have only one flare, 29% have two to five flares, and 14% have at least one flare per year. Uh, on the average follow-up of five years. And uh, although only 57% of patients have only one flare during this study period, 70% of these patients uh, are actually dependent on systemic uh, agent to prevent further flares. 
And um, this occur promptly on attempt to uh, tail down their systemic therapy or when, on, when they are exposed to classic trigger like stress, infection, even when they are still on systemic uh, therapy. Furthermore, about 30% of our patients on systemic therapy have persistent uh, pustule, which usually manifests as an annular uh, pustular psoriasis, commonly located on the lower limbs. Now let's look at the clinical characteristic of GPP flare based on historical data from the FSAE-1 study. FSAE-1 study is the first randomized control study for patients with GPP, which compares spesolimab and IL-36 receptor antagonists to uh, a placebo. And uh, on screening, patients were asked about past GPP flare, and this was uh, a chat, counter chat uh, with a retrospective uh, chat uh, review. And uh, the clinical characteristic outcome hospitalization of three different types of past flare uh, experienced by the patient were uh, captured. And uh, among 53 patients randomized, 31 most severe, 37 typical, and 14 longest flare were identified. And in this cohort of 53 uh, patients with acute GPP flare, the average number of flares per year was 3.4. And the great majority of them, 98% of them, could identify triggers for their flares. And uh, most of the patients in FSAE 1 study have moderate to severe disease, defined as a GPPGA score of 3 to 4, which is, of course, the inclusion criteria for this uh, clinical uh, trial. And uh, GPP flares have a huge impact on patients' quality of life with a DLQI of 19.5. Uh, Most past flare were treated with systemic uh, agent. And uh, most patients in this uh, study group uh, have um, flares that affected at least 30% of their body surface area, about 16% of them. And the pain and fatigue were the most consistent symptoms of GPP flares. And um, body surface area, uh, sorry, the body temperature above 38.5 uh, degrees Celsius was mainly a feature of the most severe and longest past uh, flare. Race, uh, CRP, and neutrophilia uh, were mainly uh, features of the most uh, severe uh, flares. Most flares lasted at least uh, three uh, weeks. So in the, the group of uh, patients who uh, documented most severe flare, 71% of, of this flare actually lasted at least uh, three weeks, 58% uh, in the typical and 86% uh, percent, uh, in identified longest uh, flares. The rate of hospitalization varied among the different uh, category of flare, highest for patients with the most uh, severe flare, 74%. And the postulation uh, that uh, last hospitalization that uh, um, is longer than three weeks uh, was reported in 26% of patients with the most severe past flare and 36% of patients with the longest uh, past flare. One to two weeks is the typical duration of hospitalization though. And uh, postulation that persists beyond one week is the norm for all GPP flare. So most GPP flare, they lasted at least uh, one uh, week. And time, time to postular clearance for typical flare was uh, one to two weeks. The most severe flare uh, would take three to four weeks uh, to clear. And uh, longest flare uh, took five to eight weeks uh, to clear. And time to postular clearance was at least three weeks in 78% of patients uh, who reported. In, actually, in 78% of identified most severe uh, flare. And in 91% of identified longest past uh, flare. Now move, we are moving on to uh, outcome of GPP flares. If patients uh, did not succumb to the complication of GPP, the skin lesion may remit to normal skin 
or patient may remain erythrodermic for weeks to months before achieving a normal skin. And patients with prior plaque psoriasis may revert to plaque psoriasis. However, in my experience, patients whose GPP started as generalized vascular psoriasis seldom transform into stable uh, plaque psoriasis. And residual disease such as minimal scaling, erythema or pustule are common in patients uh, post uh, flares. We already know that GPP is a potentially a life-threatening disease and uh, Professor Minchen has already shown you this uh, data. And life-threatening complications include sepsis, renal, hepatic, respiratory and cardiac failure. Documented mortality range from 4% to 24.4%. And deaths were directly attributed either to GPP or to the associated treatment, especially with the use of a systemic uh, corticosteroid. And uh, as you all know, sepsis uh, was a common cause of uh, death. A recent uh, retrospective study from Japan uh, using their nationwide inpatient database uh, documented an in-hospital mortality of 4.2% among a large cohort of 1,516 uh, patients with uh, GPP. And mortality rate was highest in patients uh, treated with corticosteroid uh, monotherapy and lowest in patients on uh, biologics, although uh, patients on biologics are younger and with less comorbidity uh, than the other group. So it is prudent to avoid using a systemic corticosteroid to treat uh, psoriasis or GPP, since uh, use of systemic corticosteroid is associated uh, with a GPP flare and it also predicts a worse uh, prognosis for patients with uh, GPP. So in conclusion, uh, GPP is characterized by recurrent flares of sterile pustular uh, eruption. It is a heterogeneous disease with a wide spectrum of uh, disease severity and a highly variable clinical cause. And although some patients may have persistent disease with intermittent flare of increased severity, most GPP patients have recurrent uh, disease. And the uh, flares are painful and they are associated with systemic symptoms and signs such as fever, fatigue, raised CRP and neutrophilia, which lead to hospitalization in at least 50% of a patient. And the systemic corticosteroid uh, as a monotherapy should be avoided uh, in patients uh, with GPP uh, flare. Time to resolution of pustule, the hallmark of GPP was more than three weeks in most flare, highlighting the need for newer targeted therapy that rapidly uh, resolve all the signs and symptoms as well as systemic uh, manifestation of uh, GPP. With that, I thank you for your attention.